So this first story is about the Jersey Devil. A gentleman from New Jersey, I guess he is, uh, wrote this, and this is really good. He says, I'm a hunter-gatherer and all-around outdoorsman. I decided to head out to a state forest here in southern New Jersey to hunt for some mushrooms after a few days removed from heavy rains. It was a large tract of land, and it's known as the Pine Barrens, and it's over a million acres of pine forests and plenty of wetlands that snake their way through the sandy, barren land. It's a rich ecosystem nestled in the southern part of the most heavily populated state per square mile in the Union. The recent rains gave the forest a renewed green as autumn approached and this was certainly one of the last real humid warm days before the cold weather arrived. I pulled my truck over to a sandy shoulder on a sugar sand road and I began to search the sandy ridges and road banks that the mushrooms grew on. The day went on and my bag got heavier and heavier with chanterelles, black trumpets, and even I even scored some chicken of the woods on an old oak tree. We cut that off an oak tree right behind this office. We get a big slab of it every year and we eat every bit of it. It's good stuff. I had plenty for supper and much more, but I wanted to enjoy the perfect day a little longer, so I took a hike down an old enduro bike trail that spit me out at the headwaters of an old bog. I was overheated from the 90 plus degree weather, so I decided to hike into the dark throes of a cedar swamp just below the bog. After wrestling with tangles of briar and thorns and stickers, I finally stumbled into a dark swamp and began to saunter my way along the tannic stream. I felt my boots sink in the moss and I listened to the birds and the tree frogs and the distant gun and cannon fire at a nearby bombing range. And I gazed over the forest floor looking for any sign of orchids. I know of a few types that bloom this type of year and I wanted to see if I could get a photograph. My days from my senses coming together in harmony that put me in a spiritual nirvana that was interrupted by a low guttural growl that cut through me. My heart dropped to my belly like a bobber dropping into a lake, and at the same moment, a stench filled the air that I can only describe as... I can only describe as stew of chicken livers left out in the sun for weeks, a truck stop bathroom, and a sprinkle of burning tires for good measure. I was tearing up and gagging at the smell, and I began to lurch backward the the way I came knowing whatever growled at me from the bushes wasn't happy to see me. I stumbled my way across the swampy landscape, while at the same time hearing large limbs breaking behind me as someone or something pursued me. My boots were concrete as I continued to sink into the muck, as the light from the surrounding pitch pine forest grew larger. I didn't dare look back behind me, as I knew that would probably slow me down, I burst through the opening like a sprinter running through the finish line and I hightailed it out to my truck. I knew the thing was not far behind me, so I got in and I peeled off, leaving a rut from skidding off that's still there today. As I drove off, a loud screech that sounded like a woman being murdered filled the air as I flew down the trail to the main route that cuts through the pines. I believe I may have encountered the Jersey Devil that day. To this day, I've only been back a few times to my little gathering spot. Each time I go back, I always remember not to walk far from the truck. Also, I always try to bring along someone for extra safety. If there's anything that I've learned over the past few years, is that there's much more out in the woods than we think. I was a skeptic for years, and I would laugh at people if they had any sort of weird encounters. But now, I completely know what's out there. Boop! Man, what a good story. This thing chased him out of the Jersey Pine Barrens. That's what it's called. My friend Eric, who does a Sasquatch podcast, he's done a lot of expeditions in the Pine Barrens. And that Jersey Devil story seems to hold some water. I mean, tons of people see that stuff. 
Okay, here's another email that I think you guys will uh, find interesting. The writer doesn't want her name revealed. Thank you for letting me share these encounters that I'll never forget. I'd like to keep my name anonymous due to the risk of being ridiculed or being made fun of. My first encounter occurred in the summer of 2002 in central Indiana. I grew up with my mother being interested in Bigfoot, but it was always a joke in my family and not considered to be a real creature. My beliefs quickly changed in just a moment with an unexpected encounter. My older sister and I often enjoyed going to youth group that met midweek about an hour from our home. Our parents let us go, but we were told always to get home before dark. That particular night, the service lasted longer than normal, causing us to be traveling home in the dark. And my parents lived on a dead-end road fairly remote with an additional quarter-mile driveway. We rounded the curve of the dead-end road, and standing in the middle of the road was a large dark figure with glowing red eyes. My sister was driving and quickly stopped the car in the road. The figure just stood there staring at us, and we stared at it. I know it only stood there for a very short time, but it felt like it was several minutes. And then the creature quickly walked off the road and into the woods. I don't remember feeling fear, but more absolute shock. My sister quickly went down the driveway to the safety of our parents' home. The picture of those glowing red eyes has never left my mind. I can see it in my mind just like it was yesterday. Twelve years later, and I was married and living with my husband on almost a 200-acre horse ranch that was shared by his family. I told my husband my previous experience, but he never acted like he believed me. One night, we decided we wanted to camp out, and we pitched a tent in the woods where we lived and enjoyed the evening around a campfire. We climbed in our tent to go to sleep, and at the same time, we both had this overwhelming feeling of dread and danger close by. We didn't see anything, but felt like we immediately had to get out of there. We grabbed our phones and flashlights, and we took off on the four-wheeler to go back to our home. A few weeks later, my husband decided to take our two dogs on a late-night four-wheeler ride in the hay field behind the large wooded area. He wanted to see what wildlife was out there at night. The dogs were excited to go and joyfully ran ahead of the four-wheeler like they usually do. My husband got to the hayfield and he shut the four-wheeler off, taking advantage of the moonlight. Suddenly, the dogs came back crying and tried to climb onto the four-wheeler with him. My husband was trying to figure out what had our dogs so scared and he shined his light across the field. And across the field... His light hit a large black figure with glowing red eyes. He said the creature quickly started walking away into the field but kept its eye on him. He started the four-wheeler and came back to the house with our dogs. He came inside and his face was completely pale, as if the blood had drained from his face. He told me what he had seen. We didn't get much sleep that night and our dog slept inside with us. I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary since then. I started to get scared to go out in the woods, but have since decided that the woods are God's creation, and I'm going to enjoy them. Good for you. I don't know the origins of Bigfoot, but I know they're real. Thank you, and God bless. Well, God bless you, ma'am. That was a great story. I really appreciate it. I think it might be kind of unusual for uh, one person to have an experience when they're younger And then they get married and their spouse, years later, has almost an identical experience. That's kind of unusual, but it sure, uh, you know, it kind of justifies everything you told him all up until that date. But it's it's just a wonderful story. I really appreciate it. And I know it's scary, but uh, we all loved it. So thanks for sending it. I don't know who this is from, but it's a good one. At some point, uh, anyway, I'm reading it cold. I haven't, I've just kind of breezed through it, so I'm going to stumble through it. Hey Cam, I found your YouTube channel a week or so ago, and I enjoy all the stories you share from all the people that have encounters. I'd like to share my encounters with you. My first encounter happened when I was nine years old. I was fishing with my brother and my stepdad on a remote part of the river in Edwards, New York. 
We were about two miles back in the woods from any main road or house. I was fishing by myself in a section of the river when all of a sudden I had a sense of fear come over me. I was scared like any nine-year-old boy would be when all of a sudden on the other side of the river, a 40-foot tall dead pine was pushed over 30 yards inside of the wood line right in front of me. There was no breeze this day and no black bear was going to knock over such a huge tree. It scared me to my core and being a clueless kid, I ran to find my stepdad uh, at the time just for a sense of safety. My second encounter happened in a small town in western Vermont where I have lived my entire life and I was heading to a job site early that morning. When driving down a two-lane country road, which I had traveled a thousand times, I came around the corner in the road and a figure stepped out from behind a tree for a few seconds as I caught it in the high beams of my lifted Chevy pickup truck. I was at a loss for words when my brother said from the passenger seat, Did you see that too? Judging by the hood of my truck, this thing was all of seven feet tall. It had yellow eyes shine. Um, although the sighting was one of only a few seconds, but I knew what I had seen. And my brother was there too to witness it with me for verification. My third encounter happened in November of 2020. I was deer hunting in northern Vermont. I was hunting with my brother on an 11,000 acre parcel of state land around 10 in the morning, and I had not seen a thing when all of a sudden... I had an overwhelming sense of fear and something was watching me in the woods. And everything went quiet and I couldn't help but fixate on a strange looking stump 120 yards out through the hardwoods and it didn't look right. Many people have the experience of mind speak from these creatures. I knew what was in the area and I simply said in my mind that I was only here for one deer and I meant him no harm. Would he please leave me alone? Although I didn't get a response after five minutes or so, the feelings went away and the stump I was fixated on was gone. I've had many odd things happen to me in the woods in my 21 years of hunting. These times are definitely the weirdest. I hope to hear my experiences on your channel and thank you for the outlet to provide so many people. I wish to keep my name anonymous because I live in a small town in rural Vermont and where everyone knows everyone. There you go, man. You got to hear your story on the channel, and I didn't say your name. So I read this cold. If you'd have had your name up top, I'd have had to go back and edit it out. This is real interesting, and I appreciate the story. Okay, that's all the stories I'm going to do today. That's three, but I wanted to show you uh, a couple of Yeti bars that I really like. This is the uh, Forest Fresh Bar. This has become my favorite bar. This is my second favorite, the Glacier Bar. It says Glacier right there. You guys check Yeti Bars out. They've also got a new IPA bar out. Use the code DC10 when you check out. You get 10% off at checkout. Check them out. YetiBars.net, Yeti Bars on Facebook. We'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks.